Okay, so this is a really weird feeling. Um, it's kind of similar to when I first decided that I was gonna leave the nine to five and change my life. Standing in Keswick, and I had every intention of going down to Scaffell Pike, get the bus down there and sleep there for a couple of nights. I've been to Scaffell Pike before. It's an absolutely stunningly beautiful mountain. Um, and I have a real soft spot for that. I say that about a lot of mountains, I know, but I genuinely do. And suddenly I'm standing here and I've got a strong, strong, strong pull to go to Scotland or to start making my way to Scotland. So I think I'm going to observe that. Well, that was totally random. Um, and just like that, I've ended up in Carlisle um, and I'm going to have a little walk around here and then I'm going to get on the bus, which takes me up to Gretna Green. Now, Gretna Green is right on the borders of um, England and Scotland, right on that kind of area there. So <laughs> we're currently in Carlisle uh, and it's really funny because it's now 20 past five on a Sunday evening so everywhere shut. <laughs> Why I suddenly got a spontaneous urge like that to kind of head towards Scotland, I don't know. But this is what I say to some of you sometimes in the comments when I say, um, I am as curious as you lot are as to see what I'm going to do next. Because I don't, I don't listen to my mind. I know that sounds crazy. I don't really listen to my mind unless it's involving where I'm going to sleep later on or I might you have to use my brain a little bit to you know, kind of think, is that safe, is that not safe? But even then, I will still go very, very strongly on gut instincts at those points. So, um, you know, but I might use my mind to think, well, if I hear that East Gretna Green is not safe, then I might head to West, you know, that kind of thing. But anyway, I'm sure you get what I'm saying there. But yeah, it's really kind of interesting, it's exciting as well. Cheers, guys. But Carlisle looks like a pretty cool little town. Seems friendly enough. It's got a nice little buzz to it as well, a nice little, uh, like a friendly atmosphere which is pretty cut mind you i find that up north anywhere i go people are just very friendly uh like genuine they're really very friendly but yeah it looks like a great little town that is a really 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 odd feeling to one minute be in england and then within a couple of hours be in scotland uh i'm in gretna green <laughs> and I have no idea where I'm going to sleep, like literally no idea where I'm going to sleep. I'm just standing here on the corner thinking, which way shall I go? So I don't want to stand around for too long because it's quite late at night. I've sort of <laughs> not picked the best time to come somewhere as well. But look in the background there. Oh my God, I, where am I? Down there. I've only just seen this myself. So let me turn you. Can you see the mountain in the background? <laughs> so that's me getting excited already about that. There's more that side as well. Um, so I'm so looking forward to getting around Scotland. Getting around Scotland. I don't know why I chose to come here so spontaneously like that. Um, but then I kind of think to myself, do I really need a reason to spontaneously come to Scotland or go to anywhere in the world come to that? Um, if I've got the means to do it and you want to do it, then why not? You know, uh, I'm here now and it feels great. Scotland seems lovely so far and I've only seen a few little streets. So, but I'm going to be heading out into the mountains. We know this. So anyway, I'll catch up with you a bit later and let you know where I'm sleeping. <laughs> So my first night in Scotland uh, and I thought I'd show you my little setup. I know you guys like it or some of you do. So there's my little tent and this is actually an old campsite. So it's pretty cool. It means the ground is kind of nice and flattish and you know, should be quite a comfortable night in there. I'm only on a roll mat. So, um, you know, little benches there that I'll get up in the morning. I'll make a cup of tea and stuff like that and just relax for, you know, so it's so far so good I've met two lovely people already and their little dog um, hi guys how you doing so good to talk to you um, so yeah awesome here we go Scotland here we come I'm so glad to be here at last after all these years and I hope you enjoy this guys good morning I'm in Scotland well technically I'm in a tent but I'm in Scotland as well and it's dry in my tent <laughs> 
I love it when I wake up and the I, I, first thing I do is grab this and I'm like, oh, it's dry. <laughs> right, let's see what Scotland's doing today. So all packed, all ready. Go and say hello to the guys in the cafe. It's where I was. Obviously guys, leave no trace. And I always kind of have a little walk up and down like the grass edge as well and clear a little bit of rubbish that might be there or whatever, especially if there's a local bin. It's just like, I kind of feel like it's a little way to say thank you to the land for letting me stay there and having a good night's sleep. And it actually was a good night's sleep there as well, by the way. Um, I crashed out about, I think it must've been about midnight um, and just was sound asleep uh, for about four or five hours, which is unusual for me when I'm wild camping. So uh, yeah, really good night's sleep. Enjoyed it a lot. Thank you so much. That's so cool. I'm currently walking from Gretna Green to a place called Anan. And then from there, I'm gonna to walk to Dumfries. And then from there, I'm gonna kind of loosely head up towards Edinburgh. If I see things on the way that I like the look of, then I'll be coming off and exploring them. But what I really like is I'm walking along here, I'm in Scotland, and uh, I'm walking along this road. And over here, let me spin you round. <laughs> in the distance, all of that is the Lake District. I think that's so cool. It shows you how kind of small the UK is, this little island that we're all sharing. You know, everything's within a stone's throw away. All this beauty, all these different things going on. Everyone, all these different people with different stories to tell and stuff. <laughs> it's so cool, I love it. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> you know what? I don't even know why it's so good. It's just so good. <laughs> It's like railway tracks. I don't know why they've pleased me so much. It's the weirdest thing. I think because it's just because I'm in Scotland. But it's beautiful. I'm so lucky with the day that's turned out as well. All the cows, the beautiful greens. Green is my favourite colour. Um, always has been my favourite colour. And what's lovely is, before I come here, I said earlier on that I was going to go to, I've been told, Scarfell Pike. Not Scaffell as I was calling it. Scarfell Pike. I was going to go there. And then I thought, no, I'm going to go to Scotland, but let me spin you round. That there, <laughs> that's Scarfell, Scarfell Pike. How cool is that? So I get to walk all the way along this road, looking at Scarfell Pike. And that is, she, she's a beautiful mountain. And I will go back there and explore it properly. I've been there once before, guys, and I spent three nights wild camping out. And that was kind of why I got to the thing of, no, I've been there. I'm getting a real strong urge to come to Scotland. And I can see why. I've not even reached, like, I guess what people would call the scenic parts of Scotland yet. But already, it's so quiet. There's no one here. <laughs> well, there is. I mean, I'm on quite a busy part, but it just feels like there's no one here. There's so much space, it's beautiful. Anyway. <laughs> Be prepared for some big gushings on this video, guys. I know some of you like it. Uh, I kind of like sharing it as well. I think it's nice for us as humans to just explore those different emotions and not cover them up. It's wonderful. Whatever they are, happy, sad, whatever. These cows are so funny. As I walk a bit further on, they then run and follow. <laughs> oh. 
Well, this isn't the best situation that I've put myself in here. I'm kind of walking up from Annan to Lockerbie, um, thinking that on all of these fields and the fact that we're allowed to wild camp in Scotland, that I'd be able to find somewhere to sleep. And what I didn't realise was that the whole way up is farmer's fields. Now, being totally unfamiliar with this whole place, the last thing I want to do is going up upsetting uh, a farmer. Um, and also, the cows here, having just seen that last lot that were running around, um, I'm reluctant to stay in a field with cows, uh, especially when they've got calves like you saw there. So the sun, I reckon I've got about 20 minutes of this kind of light left. It is actually darker here than it looks on uh, the screen. It's a long way up that road and it's just these fields all the way. So I've got a feeling that it's going to get dark while I'm hiking along here. Uh, not really what I wanted to happen. So yeah, it's not the ideal situation to be in. However, it is one of the things that I kind of, I've said this before, I don't want it to be happening, but I kind of did want it to happen. Um, this is where I discover things, you know, this is where we discover things. Anyway, I'm gonna have to go because that's a car coming and I've got my kit lying in the road there. So I'm just gonna go. Right, guys, take care. Peace. And so now it's uh, getting dark. The sun has completely gone. There's a few rays left from it there. I've got six miles to Lockerbie that way and five miles if I was to turn around and go back that way. But I know what I've already come past. So it's pointless going back. There's nowhere to sleep or there's nowhere to get shelter, I should say. I'm not too bothered about um, the sleeping part. I would just like to get a bit of shelter and feel a bit safe. Um, so the alternative, really, just keep walking forwards, you know, and don't let the mind come in telling me that zombies are going to come and get me and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I found a little town. Well, I found a little town. It's literally that building, which is a church, I think. And then these couple of houses here. I've walked around the back of the church and it seems like there's a bit of grass that is, I think it's the only option I got at this point because it's now coming up to midnight. It's pitch black. I feel a little bit better because there's street light there. <laughs> it's not the ideal scenario. So. Let me put my little torch thing on. You can see how dark it is here though. And I'm thinking of, where are we? Going round. Right here somewhere. I don't like the idea of being under big trees, so actually. I might just have to go here and I'll, not the best. But at this point, where am I? There I am. At this point, uh, it's either do this or walk up the country lanes. I don't want to keep walking up the country lanes. I wasn't enjoying that. Um, so I think I'm going to sit up here. I won't sleep. I've just put it up for shelter. So, But everything's okay. I'm just kind of sharing it with you because it's, again, it's, uh, it's just part of the journey. <laughs> so I'm set up. That's my tent. I actually feel, believe it or not, quite safe at the back here. Can you hear that owl in the background? Being by the woods is always kind of creepy, but it's also really serene. So good morning, guys. I'm alive, um, which I kind of knew I would be because I was only sleeping behind what looks like a church. Um, but wow, what a lovely little place this has turned into. So last night in the dark, everything looked really creepy. Like that little building over there looked really creepy. <laughs> and then you can hear your mind kicking and going, oh my God, am I really going to sleep here? All down this part around the back of the church. I'm saying a church. It, I don't know. I'm going to go around the front in a minute and have a look. But all this looked really creepy and dark down here. And these, um, like, I don't know what they are, guys. Doc lily pads or whatever they are. Doc leaves. We know that I don't know the technical terms for most things. Um, it looks so creepy, like there was going to be things coming out of it in the night or whatever. But yet, when I wake up this morning, 
and you have a look in the daylight and you can hear that beautiful bird song and I've kind of woken up with the world today. That's how I feel. I've... Beautiful. You hear that? All the little birds just doing what they're doing. <laughs> I'm so lucky sometimes. I mean, that's a bowling green, so... This is where I was, this is where I walked around last night. You see, this is so weird. You see like that roof bit there. I remember last night that caught my eye in the moonlight type thing. And it was like, oh my God, this looks creepy. <laughs> and I just walked around here. Uh, yeah. And you see it today. It's just beautiful, really. Um, but yeah, so that's the local area. That's where I stayed last night. Um, and it's really cool. I really enjoyed myself. So... Uh, yeah, I'm going to wait around now. That opens in a couple of hours, that coffee shop. I have a cup of coffee, sit there, and maybe get chatting to one or two of the locals, as I normally do, as some of you now know. Um, <laughs> drive the town mad, and then I'll leave. <laughs> so what an awesome night that turned out to be. This is what I'm absolutely loving about this kind of life, or this path that I've chosen to walk down, is when something feels like it's going wrong, everything's always okay. You know, I know we logically understand that when people say that. I know we can logically understand these things. But when you experience it day after day after day on all sorts of little scale to big scale stuff, you really start to just have untold faith in yourself and in the universe because it just delivers. That turned out to be an awesome night. And I met a great guy there um, called Daryl. He's the guy who owns... Hey Daryl, <laughs> he's the guy who owns the, uh, the cafe there, made me a cup of coffee and we had a chat for about half an hour, 40 minutes, um, and it just turns into a great thing. So, you know, it's, it more, it's more and more and more installing my faith in this life that when you do the things in life that it is that you actually want to do, the universe will provide. The right people just keep turning up at the right time, um, or the right things happen at the right time or it's just it's just so incredible the whole journey is just awesome live the life you want to live guys pick the life you want to live and live it it i can't bang this on enough and i'm not going to do it now because it's so early and i do it all the time but i am going to do some more like tent talk type things or sit down somewhere and do longer type videos on all that stuff. I have so much to say about that kind of thing. When I say just do it, if you like, or the mind screams at us, but, but I can't. And that's what I want to go deeper into. Um, because the only reason we think we can't is because maybe our expectations of what we think we want are far bigger than what we actually truly want. You know, the expectations of what we think we want are far bigger than what we actually truly want. And it's just, it's an incredible journey. And I love sharing it with you lot. Anyway, I'm going. I'll spin you around so you can see where I'm walking. I've got about, I've got about six miles to go that way. And then I'll be in Lockerbie. And then from there... Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, so, but we'll see. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that little bit of a chat there. And Daryl, thank you so much, brother, and I hope to see you again, my friend. Sometimes it's just as cool sitting and just watching the world go by, I'm just on this little, well, I'm on a piece of grass outside this hotel opposite a roundabout. <laughs> I've got about a mile to go down that little road over there and there's a cafe there where I'm going to get a cup of coffee. Um, and sometimes it's just wonderful sitting here watching the world go by as well, you know. Yeah, anyway, I don't know why I thought I'd share that, but I thought I would. <laughs>
So just my little camp spot for the night. Um, I feel quite safe there. I always try and put the back side of my tent against something that's solid. It kind of gives me a sense of security that no one or nothing can come in from behind, even though technically um, little animals could. It's kind of like, for me, it's that psychological thing that no people can kind of come through that backside or I'd hear them and it'd give me a chance to sort of um, be prepared inside or whatever. Um, chances are nothing ever happens, though, if I'm honest with you guys. Um, and I always like to try and face out. Um, so I'm in a fairly residential area. I can see a house there, but this is, I think this is like private land. Um, quite a nice little view going on there. That sky is actually purple. Um, it's not showing that up on the screen though, but it's actually like a purpley colour. Uh, really, really pretty. But there's cows in the field there. Um, but it seems like quite a quiet night, quite a quiet neighbourhood. And if I get asked to move on, then I just simply pack up and move on. It'll be cool. Um, but I don't think I will. A couple of people have seen me as they drove past and not not said anything so we should be good anyway had a long long day today didn't do lots of filming i was too tired if i'm honest with you to keep getting the phone out i've hiked just over 18 miles today uh which is a lot carrying a 22 to 25k um backpack so and i've been hiking since about five ish this morning no since about seven ish this morning how far seven this morning so long old day i'm gonna get in there make a hot chocolate and Hopefully not be disturbed and have a nice night's sleep and I shall see you guys in the morning. Good night. So at the end of another little wild camp here in Scotland. Uh, it seems like a lovely day today. Um, I actually had quite a nice night there in the end. Um, it rained a little bit on and off, but thankfully um, the sun has come out this morning, although it was chilly this morning when I woke up. Um, but I'm all packed away. As always, guys, you can see there's no trace of me being there from the night before. I've now got an 11-mile hike to get into Thornhill. Um, I don't know why I'm choosing Thornhill. It just seems to be on the path towards uh, Glasgow. But yeah, it was a nice night on the whole. So here we go. Let's go into Thornhill and see what the little journey en route has to offer. So I rolled up in Cummock this morning, uh, having had a fairly long hike, but I was quickly redeemed by the wonderful service, the wonderful reception rather, that I got in the coffee mill restaurant. Hello guys, thank you so much for a lovely breakfast. And all the people that I met in there as well, thank you so much for talking to me, you made my day. And to the girl also who bought me a cake for no reason whatsoever, other than just being lovely. So having spent the whole day with my tent set up there thinking I'd found a nice early spot for the day to rest up after such long hikes and long days the last sort of 48, 72 hours, um, I just got told that down there a load of uh, youths normally come over and they start drinking and they could cause a bit of bother. So I decided to edge on the side of caution and leave um, and try and find somewhere else. Um, here we go, let's move out a bit further up. So currently at Loch Lomond, um, just had the best day having sat on my Bergen after a long old hike um, at a garage and was going to ask someone for a lift into Glasgow. But no sooner had I sat down than someone pulled up and actually um, asked me where I was going if I'm a hitchhiker. I said, well, I'm going either Glasgow or Edinburgh. And they said, jump in and take you to whichever one you want to go. So we had a chat, ended up going to Glasgow 
or driving through Glasgow. But then this guy, Mark, how you doing, brother? Um, <laughs> he took me on a tour all around, I can't even remember the names of the places, but all around uh, huge parts of Scotland, mind-blowing scenery. Uh, then he took me off to get some food. We got some food and he's just dropped me off at Loch Lomond and I'm gonna find somewhere around here to sleep tonight. So stick around and I'll share this beauty with you in a minute. So good morning, day number, I think I'm day number six now in Scotland. Last night I slept in there, um, nothing too interesting to show you, that's why I don't always film all my stuff. Um, nothing too interesting, just a park, I mean Loch Lomond, um, which is just down there through that wall. I'll show you some shots of that in a bit. Um, but right now I'm going to go and get a coffee, I had a fairly decent night's sleep in this park. Loch Lomond is as you would expect it's just as beautiful as you kind of imagine it to be when you're there looking at it in reality So today I'm staying in a beautiful little town uh, called Dryman, which is in between a place called Ballock, which is just outside of Glasgow, where I slept last night. Um, and I was hiking towards Stirling. Why I was going towards Stirling, I'm not too sure, but I kind of wanted to head over to sort of east of Scotland and maybe go around the east coast and then come back down through the west coast, which would be coming through the Trossachs and stuff like that, which is a beautiful national park in Scotland. Um, so that was my plan. Anyway, on the way up to uh, Dryman, yeah, Dryman, I, I don't think the Scottish say it like that, so bear with me there, guys. Um, on the way up to Dryman, a, a guy started talking to me, and in typical Scots fashion, uh, I, unbelievably friendly, he offered me a lift to this place because he said the road that I was walking along was too dangerous. He then gave me £5 to go and have a pint for no reason whatsoever he just said have a pint on me and gave me five pounds um and i've managed to get my tent pitched up you just saw me walking across the football field just here where i've spoke to the governors of the site and they said yeah put your tent up the back there you'll be fine for a day or two if you want to stay so i'm going to have a well deserved and well earned rest uh from carrying around that great big pack stay here for a couple of days but also when i was down in dryman i saw on a pin board that someone was looking for someone to dig up their garden um, and they were paying 12 pounds an hour so i phoned them up and then she the woman said she's going to call me back at seven o'clock so fingers crossed guys i might have some work coming in whether it's a two hours work or two weeks work i have no idea but it would be nice to do a little bit of something like that um, non-commitment type work you know where i can go there and it's just perfect for what i wanted all along just bits and pieces of work to keep me plugging and keep me going along on this this incredible just wonderful journey i've got to do a video from kind of talking about all that stuff but uh yeah it's coming it really is coming um so yeah i'll keep you posted probably you'll probably find out by the end of this video anyway so there you go 